Why did you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent, the journey takes a year, or by land. But the Turks have closed this route to all Christians. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Superstition. I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Maradotti, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes. And already you're a bad man. For telling the truth? Yes. We are burning people for less. The men you're about to confront have no emotion. <clears throat> all right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rakabadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men that I learned this truth from. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And pretty much, you know, I was expecting, um, you know, a direct deposit. And then when I checked my account, you know, my deposit didn't show up because, you know, banks recognize today as a federal holiday which is Columbus Day, you know? So, me personally, I don't really keep up, you know, with the days like that. I just know when it's Friday and Saturday, pretty much, you know? But, um, you know, I didn't know today was Columbus Day, so I wanted to do a video, and why not do it on, you know, Christopher Columbus, which that's not even his real name. You know, his real name is Cristobal Colon, and he's a Jew, you know? He's an Edomite, according to the Bible. If you don't know who the biblical Edomites are walking around today in the flesh, you know, the Edomites are the so-called white people, but in particular, the so-called white man and his seed line makes up the nation of Edom, all right? Your father determined your nationality, according to Numbers 1 and 18. And even when you read about the different kings in the Bible, you know, the Levitical priesthood, you know, the genealogy of the Lord even, is going to mention men. Why? Because a man determines your nationality. You know, all the nations on the planet, they're named after men. All right? The 18 nations, they're named after their forefather. All right? Or forefathers. You know, the, but the tribes within particular nations is named after men. For the most part, all right? So Cristobal Colon, you know, which was a uh, Jew, you know, he had Hebrew interpreters on his boat because he knew the type of people he was going to encounter. And for you so-called, you know, Hispanics and Native American Indians, you know, Seminole Indians, you know, even West Indians, you know, y'all Israelites. But in particular, you so-called Hispanics, you know, Latinos, Latinas, you know, you're Israelites according to the Bible. You got to stop clinging on to saying you Spanish because the Spanish people raped, robbed, and murdered you, and the Spanish people are Edomites. You know, you speak that language because you was conquered. You know, so let's, let's get into this information. So I found this. It's called, um, this is from jbuff.com you can see because i'm screen recording right now so you can see you know this um commentary by dr jahar falk all right so this is dealing with columbus day you know today is columbus day so i'm gonna just read this and i'm gonna show you how this applies to the bible because this is real you know um so-called hispanic heritage and history all right 
because they got something called Hispanic Heritage Month, which to be Hispanic, the word Hispanic, when you search it up, it's just a territory that was conquered by the Spanish, a Spanish-speaking territory. That's all it means. You know, your nationality is not Hispanic or Latino, all right? You're Israelites, according to the Bible, for one of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, as you can see here, all right? Now, let's read this. It says, in 1492, so in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and his interpreter was a Jew whose name was Lou, and that is true. So he had a Hebrew interpreter on his boat, and it's going to explain to you why he had that, because he knew that the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indian-speaking tribes were what? Israelites from the lost 10 tribes of the nation of Israel, all right? They became lost, how? Because they was exiled out of the land when you read 2 Kings 17, you know? For following the way of the heathen, idol worshiping, you know, they started that in, in our land. So the Lord exiled them out of the land first. And who was left? You know, the southern kingdom, you know, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which Levi was scattered amongst all the tribes, all right? So they became lost after a period of time. They wasn't in the land. They was in captivity, meaning they was in slavery under the Assyrians, you know, the Assyrian Empire. So it says, indeed, it is true, Louis D. Torres was not the only Jew who sailed with Columbus on the 3rd of August that year. Columbus navigator and his doctor were also Jews. All three and two more were Jews who underwent formal conversion to Christianity. And what what is what does that link up with? That links up with King Bulan, you know, the Khazarian king that converted to so-called Judaism, you know? Because these Edomites they try to convert to our customs fearing that they would be conquered by either, you know, the, the Christians or the Muslims. All you gotta do is go on Google Go to images or the web, type in King Bulan, B-U-L-A-N. It's going to give you a brief history on the Khazarian Empire and their particular king, you know, King Bulan. So it says, conversion to Christianity one day before the voyage began, but were, but were nevertheless viewed as Jews both by other Jews and Spanish Christians who called Jews converted to Christianity Moran Moranios, meaning swan. Columbus in included de Torres, which, you know, we know his name is Louis de Torres. And that's why, you know, a lot of these so-called Hispanics, you know, so-called because they're Israelites, whether you want to accept them or not, you know, they are part of the 12 tribes of Israel, you know. A lot of you, you have names like Burgos, you know, Torres, Hernandez. They ain't no different than the so-called, you know, Negroes over here that got names from their slave masters. All right. Y'all got the same names. Why? Because Jeremiah 15, 33, we was oppressed together. We was conquered by the same nation of people, which are the Edomites, that just spoke different languages. That's all. It's the same people. Same enemy. So it says, continuing on, it says Columbus included de Torres because de Torres spoke Hebrew. So he brought Louis de Torres and other Hebrew interpreters on a boat. Why? Because as you saw in the intro of this video, he read the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 13. All right, verses 40 to 46. So he knew the type of people he would be encountering. And this is why I did a video explaining that these Edomites, they knew the people that they was coming to conquer. All right. They read the Bible, just like how they read the Bible. They know who the real Jews are. They know who the lost 10 tribes of Israel are and is. They know who the 12 tribes of Israel is and were in the past, how they look. They read the Bible. The scriptures tell you that. 
our enemies accomplish a, a diligent search. They read the Bible and they know the people they're getting ready to encounter. So why would Christopher Colon or a.k.a. Christopher Columbus bring Hebrew interpreters with him if the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians are Israelites? All right. They spoke Paleo Hebrew and they left behind artifacts proving that they are the lost 10 tribes of the nation of Israel, that they're Israelites, too. All right. See, a lot of our people is ignorant. You want to cling on to Pan-Africanism. You want to exclude the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. But look at the similarities proving that the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians, that they was oppressed under the Egyptians as well in Egypt because they're Israelites. They was there with us. All right. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel was oppressed together. You see the pyramids in Guatemala and Mexico, South and Central America, all around the world. You think that's a coincidence? It was the same people that was oppressed under the Egyptians. It says Columbus evidently believed or wanted to believe that he would meet Hebrew speaking Jews on reaching the other side of the world. Why? Because everybody comes from the east. All right. Everybody originates from the east, so-called Middle East. But then over time, migrated to the west. All right. Now, you, when you read First Kings, I think, chapter 10, verses 20 through um, 22, you had um, King Solomon's fleet at the time. You know, them Canaanites, he would send them over here to get exotic animals, you know, different type of precious metals and bring it back to, um, you know, King Solomon, because it was 40 years of peace under King Solomon. And the name of the region was what? Asherif, which if you can receive it, and even when you read the um, Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925, or the definition of um, Asherif, it's going to say the Americas. All right? Continuing on, it says, Columbus believed he will find the 10 lost tribes of Israel. All right. And it's, it's 10 lost 10 tribes of Israel, you know. And those are the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. Continuing on, it says, there and hence thought he would need a Hebrew speaker. So come on. These Edomites, they know who they was coming to conquer. All right. And they know that the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians are Jews. You know, are Israelites because Jewish is short for Judah. But sometimes, you know, these heathens, they like to apply Jew to all the tribes of Israel. But really, Jewish is short for Judah. All right. Continuing on, it says. Let me see. What was that? It should be noted that the voyage of Columbus was financed by two Jews. Just like. The southern kingdom, you know, the so-called uh, Negroes, you know, Judah, Benjamin, and then Levi, you know, who financed the good ship? Jesus. You know, who did the Arabs, who did the Arabs, the Africans sell to the Arabs, and who did the Arabs sell us to? The tribe of Amalek, which Amalek was the, the grandson of um, Esau, the top, the top tribe of the nation of Edom which are these Jewish people today who you call the Zionist regime or the shadow government, you know? We got the same enemy. It's too much proof out there for our people to be ignorant and exclude the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. Too much proof out here. It says Columbus believed he would find the 10 lost tribes of Israel there, hence thought he would need a Hebrew speaker, it should be noted that the voyage of Columbus was financed by two Jews, Louis D. Santangelo. I, I probably can't pronounce that. I'm not Spanish. All right. It says Chandler or Kent Cancellor. Probably pronouncing that wrong, too, but you got the word there. Of the royal household of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella and Gabriel Sanchez, treasurer of Aragon, both um, conversos, of course. So those are the two Edomites, 
you know, that funded Columbus um, voyage. It says when D. Torres had landed on Hispaniola, he saw a bird which he thought was a peacock and named it Tuki. All right. And when when um, King Solomon's navy fleet of them Canaanites, I can't remember the name, but it's in First Kings, chapter ten, verses um twenty through twenty two. You know they would bring peacocks and precious animals back to King Solomon. It says and named it Tuki, the Hebrew word for that animal. We therefore call it Turkey today. Hispaniola is divided into French speaking Haiti. And the Spanish-speaking Dominican Republic, you know, which are the tribes of um, Simeon and Levi. It says, the Taurus eventually settled in Cuba and therefore became the first European settler of the New World, except the Norwegians who had come to Newfoundland in a thousand only to disappear when their colony was abandoned for unknown reasons. Let's get back to the point. It says, as we have just seen, Columbus believed the legend... Of the lost ten tribes, this was believed by many people and is still current, although we know now that the ten tribes dragged into Babylonian captivity, right? Because you had the southern kingdom, you know, they was in captivity under the Babylonians, you know, the Neo-Babylonian Empire or the Babylonians. And then you had um, the northern kingdom was in captivity under the Assyrians. And the reason why you keep hearing me referencing northern and southern kingdom, because when you read 1 Kings chapter 11, around the 30th verse on down, you know, it gives you that brief history. You know, King Solomon, he got old, so his heart fell away after his concubines, you know, gods, you know? And then he started, you know, idol worshiping and stuff like that when he got old. Because when you get old, you get weaker. You start slipping in the tongue more. You know, so that happened. So the Lord took the kingdom from King Solomon and a certain amount of tribes or Rehoboam, which was actually Solomon's son that reigned in his stead. And then you had Jeroboam, which wasn't Solomon's son. And there the northern kingdom, which are and is the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. You know, they went with Jeroboam and Jeroboam made them sin. You know, he willingly made them sin. He was a, a wicked ass king, you know. Continuing on, it says, um, all right, so that's pretty much the point. It's just giving you some brief history on the, um, the Hebrew interpreters, all right, but that's the point. Now, let's read the Bible. This is Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes, you know. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. In the time of Hosea, which is Hosea, the king whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. So the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indian tribes, they was in captivity under the Assyrians, when you read 2 Kings chapter 17, all right? Let's continue on, verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, because it was multitude of heathen that was in our land, you know? You had, when you read um, 2 Kings 17, I think it's around the 23rd or 24th verse, you had... That particular Assyrian king, he was putting heathens into our land. All the Assyrian kings have done that. Even Asherodon, when you read Ezra chapter 4, you know, I think it also mentions it in the Apocrypha. Nehemiah also mentions it, um, mentions it in Nehemiah chapter 4, I think around verse 8 or 9. You always had Assyrian kings that put heathens into our land, which led up to the point where what? You had that um, Samaritan woman, you know, and then the Lord told her, you know, you don't know what you worship for salvations of the Jews. And the day is going to come when the true worshipers is going to worship the father in truth and in spirit, which is right now. All right. 
So you, you had that. That's why the Lord told his 12 disciples at that time, don't go into Samaria. But continuing on, it says, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So everybody comes from the east, you know, the so-called Middle East. But the first people to inhabit, meaning to actually live and dwell in America, which was called Asherif, was who? The so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians, which are Israelites. Because how did Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Christopher Columbus, how did he read the Apocrypha and understand the quote-unquote legend of the people that he would be, you know, um, the people that he would meet when he got there? Those people that was there, according to the legend, according to what's written in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is a part of the Old Testament, who was there? The so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians, proving that what? That they're the lost tribe, the lost ten tribes of the nation of Israel. All right? It's very simple to understand. It says, Whenever mankind dwelt, verse 42, that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. Because they wasn't doing that in their own land. They was idol worshiping. They was following the way they even. You know, they had their own priesthoods. It was, you know, it was crazy. You know, you read like Judges, like 18, you know? The northern kingdom had a track record of being wicked, according to the Bible. You know, the first one's the idol worship. But then on down the line, you had the southern kingdom that started doing the same thing. That's why Jeremiah chapter 3, it, it goes into that. Mainly around verse 8, how Judah have played the harlot. Also, you know, our people committed, committed fornication against the Lord. You know, idol worshiping. Worshiping the gods of the heathen, keeping heathen customs. The Heavenly Father is a jealous power, so there's consequences for breaking a covenant, which is an agreement. There's consequences for that. So we went into exile, we went into captivity under all the heathen nations, but mainly those Assyrians, all right, and on Babylonians at the time. And now we are oppressed right now by these Edomites. You know, the so-called white man in his sea line. So his proof of 2nd Ezra 13 and 42, right? Now, this is a great site. You know, I encourage all, you know, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians to go on this site. You know, I'm screen recording. You can see the name of the website, the, the real Hebrew Israelites.com. All right. And everything you need to know is really going to be on here. All right. You can see it right there. You can see everything right there. All right. But let's deal with 2nd Ezra 13 and 42. You got the lost lunar stone, right? This is the lost lunar stone in New Mexico in which the native so-called Hispanic tribes and the so-called Native American tribes lived. The writings on the stone is ancient Paleo-Hebrew. This is the language, you know, of the heavens, you know? This is the language the Heavenly Father speaks in, the angels, the Messiah. All right, when the Messiah was in the flesh, born of a man and woman through sexual intercourse, it's the language he spoke. When you read on um, Acts chapter 26. So it says, um, that proves that the native indigenous peoples of the Americas were the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. This is the translation of the Lost Lunar Stone. It is the scriptures from the Holy Bible teaching the commandments of Yahweh, which Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. So this is this is an actual rock. You can actually Google this Lost Lunar Stone. All right. So, all right. So it says another stone in the Americas that say Yahweh, Allah, which is Yahweh, our power. All right. It's too much evidence to prove that the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indian speaking tribes are Israelites. All right. So you can see some pictures here. You know, they got some information on the Mayans and the Aztecs. Got some information on the pyramids. All right. So, you know, check check this website out. You know, you should want to know who you are. 
Because in school, you ain't going to learn that. Verse 43, it says, And they entered into the river. They entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. Right? Continuing on. So there's an actual river Euphrates. You know, you look on the map, the geographical location. They sailed from over there. Right? And then it says, For the most high, then show signs for them and head had still the flood till they were passed over. All right. So they entered into the river Euphrates and it took them 1.5 years roughly to get over here to Asherah, which was the Americas. And it says, for through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Asherah. All right. So when you go to the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925, it's going to tell you. Asherah is referring to the Americas, all right? And this is how Columbus understood and knew the type of people he was going to be encountering. See, in school, you ain't taught that. In school, you're institutionalized, you're taught lies, you're taught how great the so-called white man is. He discovered everything. He's this great-ass, you know, voyager. But they don't give you information. And, and I'm being sarcastic, you know, they're not... Great people, they rape, rob, and murder people, and steal people's identities. All right, but in school, you ain't taught that. You're not taught the origin of so called Hispanics and Native American Indians that they Israelites. You know, we don't learn shit in school. Verse 46 it says, Then dwelt there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. So this took place. All right. So continuing on. So this is some of the crimes of uh, Christopher Columbus. You got people, you know, willingly loving this day, you know, worshiping this day. They think today is a great day. So I Google crimes of Christopher Columbus. It says top five atrocities committed by Christopher Columbus, which, like I said, Christopher Columbus real name is Cristobal Colon. And he was a Jew. All right. Jew meaning Jewish. You know, he was an Edomite from the tribe of Amalek. So it says we could um, sub subjugate them all in his journal. Columbus didn't mince words about his intentions after meeting the Arawak natives in the Bahamas in 1492. All right. Slavery and gold. Columbus had two goals in the Caribbean to find golds and slaves. All right, but blood for gold, cruelty, mass genocide. Let's check this one out. Nine reasons Christopher Columbus was a murderer, tyrant, and, and scoundrel. All right, number one, Columbus kidnapped a Carib woman and gave her to a crew member to rape. You see? Number two. On Hispaniola, a member of Columbus' um, crew publicly cut off an Indian's ears to shock others into submission. See the type of things they was doing to our people? Columbus kidnapped and enslaved more than a thousand people on Hispaniola. Columbus forced Indians to collect gold for him or else die. About 50,000 Indians committed mass suicide rather than comply with the Spanish. All right. And like I said, Spanish people and the Spanish language, that's an Edomite language. Because you got a lot of so-called mainly Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, just the northern kingdom in general. They, they prideful with that language. You know, that's the language of your oppressor that you speak. Just like how I'm speaking English, you know. But it's prophesied that that will happen. Number six, 56 years after Columbus' first voyage, only 500 out of 300,000 Indians remained on Hispaniola. So he was killing them all and raping them all. Number seven, Columbus was also horrible to the Spanish under his rule. Number eight, settlers under Columbus sold nine and 10-year-old girls into sexual slavery. Just like today, you got 
sex trafficking going on. Who you, what's the root of that? Who you think is behind that? These Edomites. They're pedophiles like Joe Biden has. He's a pedophile. Number nine, it says Indian slaves were beheaded. And then you got guys like Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, the information is out there. Number nine, Indian slaves were beheaded when their Spanish captors couldn't be bothered to unite them. All right. So it's a lot of crimes that this man did, but you can search it up for yourselves. And this this is why, you know, the Edomites, they're going to be destroyed after serving a thousand years of hardcore slavery. According to Obadiah chapter one, verse 18. What I mean by hardcore slavery is that in the kingdom of heaven, these heathen nations will go into captivity. According to Revelation 20 and 5, the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, Jeremiah 30 and 16, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 2 through 3. All right. They're going to be wiped out as a, as a nation. The Edomites I'm talking about, Deuteronomy 25 and 19, they got to pay for their crimes. The Most High remembers the crime that you committed against his people. You got to pay for that because that, that wouldn't be fair. All right. And the Most High, he remembers the things of the past, which is why you have these judgments coming up on y'all. According to Ecclesiastes um, 3 and I believe 15, Obadiah 1 and 10 for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Right? Because they're supposed to be our brothers, right? But they broke the brotherly covenant. You know, you read about that in Psalms 55, you know, I think chapter 20. I mean, Psalms chapter 55, verse 20. You know, they broke all these treaties. Andrew Jackson. It says, Against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. This is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven, not right now. All right? So they got to pay for their crimes. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to steal. That's what he did. He stole gold. He stole the people off the land. He raped our woman. You know, there's images of pregnant so-called Hispanics and Native American Indian women being hanged upside down and cut in the stomachs open. If I can find uh, um, an image of it, if it's still online, I'm going to make it the thumbnail to this video. So this is what he did. He stole the resources. You know, he stole the people. You know, they was gang raping our women. You know, they was raping the men too. It says, and to kill, mass genocide. But, you know, today is Columbus Day. You know, he's some great voyager, right? Come on, man. And to destroy. He destroyed our people. I am come, this is Yahweh Shah speaking. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. And we will through the blood of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shah, because according to Romans 8 and 17, we're going to be joint heirs in the kingdom of heaven under Yahweh Shah, you know, and King David. We're going to be perfect in the kingdom, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel that you read about in Revelation 7. So I just want to do that quick video. Shalom.